I think I'd make a good Canadian. Really. First of all, I try to be as polite as I possibly can be, as often as I can be. Politeness is a big thing in Canada, I've heard. So I think that would be a natural asset to being a Canadian, politeness. Uh, secondly, I would love to be able to use the metric system in everyday practical exercises, you know, without seeming like a weirdo or a freak. Honestly, what is with these imperial measurements that we came up with down here in the States? How many ounces in a pound? 10? <laughs> no, 16. How many feet in a mile? A thousand? Hell no, 5,280. Honestly, who came up with that crap? The metric system is elegant in its simplicity. Multiples of 10. What's so hard to learn about that, honestly? Anyway, third, I am semi-conversational in French. So with just a little bit of brushing up, I would be perfectly at home getting along with the Francophone population of Canada. And if that's not an asset to being a Canadian, I don't know what is. And fourth, what was the fourth thing? I thought of it this morning. What? Something that I really like a lot that Canadians also really like. Oh, shoot. I'll think of it at some point. I just It's right on the tip of my tongue. I'll think of it when I least expect it. Yeah. We can go on with the video. I'm just having my lunch. Canada Week here on Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, it is my week-long celebration of my favorite music from our neighbor to the north, the nation of Canada. And today is a very special episode of Canada Week. It is my guest collaborations episode. Yes, I thought it would be a special treat and a whole lot of fun to bring in two guest uh, collaborators, fellow YouTubers, good friends of mine, uh, music YouTubers who both happen to be from Canada themselves. Uh, so it would, I thought it would give a, a fun insider's perspective, if you will, on the music of Canada. Uh, yes, I have invited both Shyok of the Quotable Shyok and Ryan from True North Reviews, uh, both of whose channels are linked to in my description below, by the way. So uh, go check them out, uh, subscribe to them if you haven't yet. They both have great content on their channels. Uh, I've invited them both to give uh, a few minutes to uh, talk about some of their favorite albums and or artists from Canada, both current and classic favorites of their own. Uh, so first, let's start off the proceedings with my friend Shyok from The Quotable Shyok. Take it away. Hello everyone, my name is Shyok and my channel is The Quotable Shyok. You can find the link to it in Tom's description below. Canada is responsible for, in my opinion, creating some of the most popular and iconic artists in the mainstream and outside of the mainstream. Today I want to tell you about two Canadian artists that I love. One is a little bit newer, and the other has been around for a little bit longer. My favorite new Canadian singer is Alessia Cara, and I put new in quotes for a reason. Technically, Alessia broke through to the mainstream in 2015, but I would argue that, first of all, that's not actually that long ago, and second of all, she didn't actually reach her full potential until much later. Her breakthrough hit was the well-written and extremely catchy here, and she later had two more hits in the form of the phenomenal Wild Things and the underrated, although still not amazing, Scars to Your Beautiful. Her debut album, Know It All, was decently successful, but I only really thought it was an okay to good album overall. What really won me over on Alessia Cara was 2018's The Pains of Growing, a fascinating, well-written, and catchy from front to back album stacked with great songs, including, but not limited to, Growing Pains, Nintendo Game, and Easier Said. She also, just a few weeks ago, released a new EP. This EP is entitled This Summer, and it is a tight six track long EP with zero bad songs on it. My personal favorites would be OK OK, October, and Rootin' For Ya. This EP was a lot lighter and more fun than The Pains of Growing, and was the blast of excitement that we all needed going into the fall season. Actually, earlier this year, surprisingly enough, I did get the absolute pleasure and delight of seeing Alessia Cara in concert. She brought the The Pains of Growing album to life in a new way and showed that she's nowhere near done and still has a big desire to keep going. And if she keeps making great music, then absolutely she deserves to. 
And it's pretty clear I do love my favorite new Canadian artists, but this next one is one of my all-time favorites, so I do think they are a little bit better. While I love the band Rush a lot, truly I do, for their captivating instrumentals, brilliant lyrics, and distinctive vocals, I don't want to pick them as my all-time favorite because I feel like A, that's kind of a generic pick, and B, I don't listen to them as much as this next artist. Now, please keep in mind that this next artist is not necessarily my number one all-time favorite Canadian artist artist because I don't think I have a definitive answer to that question, but she is one of my all-time favorites and I truly do love her a lot. But before I reveal this pick, you have to promise me that you're not going to roll your eyes or go, but they haven't been around that long because honestly, I have liked this artist's past three releases and I even somewhat enjoy their debut album Kiss to some extent. In case you can't tell, I'm talking about the queen herself. Carly Rae Jepsen. And yes, okay, she only broke through to the mainstream seven years ago, but I've only been around for like 15 and two thirds years, so that's almost half of my life anyways. Okay, whatever, that was a pretty weak argument, but I do love her and her music a lot, so just let me have this one. Carly Rae, of course, broke onto the scene with the, at this point, iconic Call Me Maybe, a track that I don't care what you say is still infectious and cute. She later followed that up with the album Kiss, and while that album was nothing to write home about, it did have a few catchy moments on it like the title track. This kiss is something that can't reasons. Two or three years after that though, we got Emotion, a fantastic pop record that was pretty much amazing from front to back with gems like I Really Like You, Give Me Love, Let's Get Lost, and Run Away With Me, just to name a few. With so many awesome tracks like those and ones I haven't even mentioned, no wonder I come back to this album almost every month. Following that though, we got the arguably even better Emotion Side B, which was a fantastic collection of tracks that had just as much catchiness as Emotion. This EP had songs like First Time, Fever, Store, and Roses, which I come back to almost every month as well. I mean, the song Store has one of the most infectious hooks probably ever. I'm just going to the store, to the store, I'm just going to the store, hey, you might not see me anymore, anymore, I'm just going to the store, hey. Later that year, we also got the infectious and stupidly fun cut, Cut to the Feeling, which has one of her most explosive and vibrant choruses to date. But while she took three years off from releasing new solo music, she finally came back this year with the very good Dedicated, which, while not as good as Emotion or Side B, was still a very enjoyable collection of love-centric and well-produced tracks with hooks that will be stuck in your head for days. Favorites on this record for me would include the melodic and disco-like Julian, the darker No Drug Like Me, the cheeky Want You In My Room, and the love-centric anthem that is Party For One, amongst others. But while she has made undoubtedly a lot of amazing songs and some really great records, it's more than that that makes her one of my all-time favorite Canadian artists. She is a talented and distinctive singer, she has a great knack for pop hooks, and she clearly cares about music and what she puts out there. Watch some interviews with her or read some articles about her and you will see that she doesn't just release the first 12 tracks that she records on an album. In fact, the 12 songs that were chosen for Emotion the Record were picked out from about 300 songs. She clearly cares about her craft and this music is clearly a personal thing to her. In addition, I love her because it shows that while yes, to some extent she was a one-hit wonder, she later came back with quality music and that one, people saw through the one-hit wonderness, they saw that she's actually creating great music and now she has a pretty decent kind of cult following in a sense. Also, I love that she supports the LGBTQ plus community so much, and I love that she consistently portrays the message to love who you want no matter what. I mean, even at the end of the Call Me Maybe video, there was this twist where the guy that she was going after just turned out to be gay, and it was kind of this nice thing because in 2012, it wasn't quite as common now to have so much awareness for this community, but it was something that she did at the time, and it kind of raised more awareness, and I just applaud her for that. It's just, it's great that she supports this community so much and genuinely cares about them. A few weeks ago though, I actually got to see her in concert too, and that was an amazing experience for me. Seeing so many of her best and some of my favorite songs, arguably ever, brought into a live atmosphere was amazing. She had such a great presence to her, and you could tell that she genuinely liked the music she was performing. It was also so clear that she has this love for her fans, and it was awesome to see her loving the fact that all of us were singing along to all of the 22 songs that she performed. 
Overall though, she seems like a really good person, is a great live act, and makes music that will live on for years to come. So yeah, she's only been around for seven years, but her music is gonna last decades. You'll see. Anyways, thank you all so much for hearing my little piece about my two favorite Canadian artists. Once again, my channel will be linked in Tom's description box below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Tom because he really does make awesome content. Anyways, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much, Shayek. Uh, both good choices, by the way. Uh, artists I have checked out myself, uh, as a matter of fact. So thank you so much for your contribution. And now let's just keep the ball rolling right along here and head on to into my friend, Ryan from True North Reviews with his thoughts on his favorite Canadian artists and albums. Take it away, Ryan. Hey there, my name is Ryan from True North Reviews, and before I get into anything, I just want to give special thanks and a shout out to Tom for including me on his Canadian Music Week. It truly is an honor to speak on behalf of where I come from, but I gotta give some love to America too, especially that guy Tom. He's a great guy, he has lots of music knowledge and experience, and I'm just happy to be here. Now, when Tom reached out to me to plan for this video, I instantly knew what Canadian classic I was going to talk about, but the newer artist spotlight, that was a bit harder to drum up because of the sheer talent and spread of a lot of great artists across Canada. I've narrowed it down to a more commercially known and friendly accessible band that have been at least making their mark in Canada. I don't know how much of an impact they've really had down in the States. Regardless, the newer Canadian artist that I'd like to highlight is the Arkells. They're not technically brand new, they've been releasing albums since 2008, and my favorite one from them is their 2014 release. High Noon. This is their third studio album. More context about the Arkells, they are a Canadian rock band from Hamilton, Ontario. Their album High Noon landed them a couple Juno Awards for Group of the Year and Rock Album of the Year in 2015. The lead singer Max Kerman is a McMaster University alum. He studied political science and a few of the Arkells' songs revolve around faint political references. Not so much that they would dominate an entire album, but the opening track from High Noon is one of those tracks. Sonically, the record opens like it's meant to be played in a huge stadium or a field as this gargantuan rock song kicks it all off. Lyrically, it's criticizing the political figures and little boys who put money before human empathy. But really, when this album isn't protesting the constructed systems of money, it relies on vivid storytelling and usually involves some love interest or going on a car ride. The influences of 60s and 70s Motown always come to mind when I listen to this album, but that doesn't mean other influences can't shine through from an artist like Genesis on the track Systematic. On the song, I love how the strings fly in and we have Max who can effortlessly switch between his shouted vocals and falsetto. And really that Genesis influence comes through on the chorus with the call and response vocals. It definitely reminds me of the song Land of Confusion. Instrumentally at the core of Arkells and their music, they revolve around keyboards and cleanly produced guitars. The former of which keyboards are handled by Anthony Carone who steals the spotlight on many of my favorite tracks from this album. Cynical Bastards, for example, drives with this pulse of a Bruce Springsteen arena rock song from the 80s. Hey Kids breaks things down with a Billy Joel inspired piano riff. And the ever popular single Leather Jacket builds its anthemic and irresistible hook around the slick harmonies of the keyboards. Boiling things down to the main reasons why High Noon is a fantastic and really a standout album for Canadian rock in the 2010s, it simply comes down to two things storytelling, and pop hooks. Those are the strengths to this album. Obviously with Leather Jacket, it's ever present, but other cuts like 1111 and Never Thought That This Would Happen, they are essential to be played on any teenage love playlist. Those last two songs I mentioned are easily my favorites on the project. It just goes back to my earlier point about Max Kerman and how he was on the intro track arguing that human values and empathy should be put before anything else. Now another band that shows a lot of heart and human values is is the Tragically Hip, and their album Fully Completely might have completely captured everyone's hearts back in the early 90s, at least for Canadians, because not much success came from this album in the US. In fact, Tragically Hip's record label at the time, MCA, stopped promoting the project in the US only after two weeks of its initial release. This is even after the record label put a lot of faith in Chris Sangarides to produce an album with an American rock radio friendly sound. So despite it being a flop in America, Fully Completely in Canada was a hit, 
remains a hit and is regarded as one of the greatest albums in Canadian history. It reached the top of the RPM albums charts and it is certified diamond in Canada for achieving sales of over a million copies. Looking at the lyrics on fully completely, at least I start to realize why this album didn't rise above that threshold of positive results in the States. Uh, it is an album that is heavily centered around Canadian values, history, and icons. The opening track, Courage, was inspired by Canadian author Hugh McLennan. The song Looking for a Place to Happen deals with the subject matter of European encroachment of North America, referencing Jacques Cartier for ruling Canada in the name of France. A couple tracks go west and talk about the western provinces and their standout nature compared to the rest of Canada. And there is a track that draws focus focus to the kidnapping and assassination of Quebec cabinet minister during the FLQ crisis of 1970. So yeah, if you're not aware of these people, events, and places, I can see why it's hard to approach this album for its themes. What is hard to believe though with this album is people not liking the rock aspect and the memorability of these badass songs. I would argue there was a distinct personality to the lead singer, Gord Downey. He had charisma, he had vibrato, the shaky brand of vocals that went on to be shakier as his career went on. Really, Gord shows off his talent on the track at the 100th Meridian, where he has this vocal scatting with a bit more coherence. It truly is commendable and compelling. And his shrieking vocals on the title track are spine-chilling and haunting. Not to mention that that title track has one of the best bass lines I've ever heard in my life period. But to put the nail in the coffin here, I would say that there's other songs that just are really badass, including 50 Mission Cap. It has a stomping and thumping highway tune to it, and it's begging you to roll down your windows and drive really fast while listening. And the last song I want to mention here is Wheat Kings, which is a Canadian backwoods sounding song with loons and wildlife that kicks off the track before we clear the way for the acoustic guitar and this prairie inspired folk tune. Yeah, so Fully Completely is a cornerstone in Canadian music history, and it's a benchmark for rock and folk albums everywhere, not just by Canadian standards. And I'm gonna have to leave it at that. That's how I'm feeling about those two albums. I'm gonna send it back to Tom, but again, thanks. All right, Ryan, thank you so much for your picks, and in stark contrast to uh, Shayek's contribution, uh, these are two artists I have never checked out before, so I am very eager to uh, take a listen to those. They sound like they might be right up my alley. But anyway, thank you so much, guys, Shayuk and Ryan, both for your great contributions to my video. I really, really appreciate your hard work. And I know you recorded these... Uh, by the way, these guys recorded these things, what, two or three months ago, and I'm just now getting to uh, putting them up. They were so speedy and quick and uh, helpful with our contributions. Thank you to you both again, Ryan and Shayuk. Uh, tremendous thanks to you both. And by the way, there is no shortage of good Canadian music YouTubers out there. I've discovered a few uh, very recently. Uh, there's one guy called Canadian Stud Muffin, and uh, he has uh, he, he's a gentleman who's actually a little bit older than I am, and uh, he what he gives is his that great Canadian sense of humor. I, at least I assume it's kind of a typical Canadian sense of humor, kind of self-deprecating, and uh, uh, he, he kind of makes it look like he's a little more full of himself than he really is. I mean, it's it's, it's kind of an exaggeration, but he's funny and fun to watch, and he's actually got really good opinions on music too. Seriously, so he's great. He's got. Uh, a pretty darn good YouTube following. He's he's right up there with uh, uh, Spectrum Pulse, by the way, who was also Canadian, another uh, great YouTuber. And also, uh, there's a channel called 33 R Channel 33 RPM, and uh, they're a very good music channel. I haven't watched a whole lot of them lately. I've just r discovered them recently, but uh, yeah, they're they're fun to watch as well. So, yes, uh, Canadians are uh, uh, pretty much in a, a league of their own when it comes to music YouTubing. There's a whole bunch of them out there. And I guess, well, probably in the wintertime, there's not a whole lot else to do in Canada but uh, go on YouTube and, you know, share your opinions on music and whatever. So, uh, but anyway, yes, don't be afraid to go exploring uh, the YouTube frontier for uh, music YouTubers from Canada and elsewhere. Some great content out there that uh, I've, I haven't discovered yet, I'm sure. There's a lot of great stuff out there. So, but anyway, again, thank you to Ryan and Chaya for your contributions. And uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers, including Ryan and Chaya and a bunch of others, all of whom are worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell 
so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.